The partition of India in 1947 displaced over 15 million people and saw one of the greatest migration in history. One community that lost their home forever were the Sindhis, many of whom took the sea route to move out and landed up in Bombay. After all, Sindh was part of the Bombay Presidency till the 1930s. Go to Pune, close to Bombay, and you will find a place that became a nucleus for Sindhis across the world. Here, they found a sanctuary at the feet of Dada Vaswani, the head of the Vaswani mission and a great disciple of its founder, Sadhu Vaswani. Through his work and writings, Dada touched millions of lives, and he was proud to declare that he belonged to no one sect. God, he said, is one. Dada passed away on 12th June 2018, just short of his 100th birthday. We met him a year before to talk about his journey. I am just a simple person, a pilgrim, a wanderer, a vagrant of the Lord who keeps moving from place to place from country to country, moving in quest of fellow pilgrims who may have that intense de desire, that longing for the higher, the spiritual value of life. Uh, this has been my, I shouldn't say, it is my effort because everything comes from the Lord. But this is how He wishes to use me. You know, tell us about your journey, Dada. You know, you've uh, seen different phases of India. You have, you know, struggled like your community. You've moved out of your homeland. You came to Pune. You settled over there. You know, you've been so closely associated with Sadhu Vaswani. What is... Uh, how have you seen India change? India has changed considerably. The patriots of India who offered their lives and all that they had to break the chains, the fetters that bound their homeland, they had a different idea of the India which they were building. The India that we have now is not the real India. No. Uh, but I believe that this is a period of transition. Uh, it will change. And India, the soul of India, will assert itself. So the soul of India is God. Today we have forgotten God. Today it is as though we have thrown out God, thrown Him out of our homes and our educational institutions. Those are the two centers of character building. If you wish to build character, you have to work through these two centers. And it is character that builds a country. Mm. It is not money. It is not fame. It is nothing but character which builds a nation. And I am very sad when I survey the situation and I find that there is no character. Our legislators pass laws, they don't respect them themselves. How do you strengthen the moral fiber of a country? Because you're right, I mean, there, there are lots of challenges that we are facing today. So I'm going to break it up into two parts. First is, how do you build the mor moral fiber all over uh, again? As I said, the two centers are the home and education. 
we need a new type of education. The education that we are passing on to the students today is the one that we have received as a heritage from the Britishers. The Britishers were here, they needed clerks. <laughs> and they gave this type of education with a view only to manufacture clerks. We do not want clerks. We want leaders, leaders of the true type, leaders who are prepared to sacrifice everything that they have for the sake of the people. As I told you two years ago, I was in America and there we had a press conference. And they asked me a number of questions. One of them was, what would be your advice to the average American? And I said, it would be, slow down your pace. <laughs> then they asked, what is the need of your own country? And I said, the greatest need of my own country is of men and women of character. Mm. Men and women whom the lust of office will not betray, whom the gains of office will not lead astray, men and women who will not be hungry for seats of power, but who will use all the power they have in the service of India's steaming millions. This is what India needs today. When the British had left India, uh, we became what we call secular. We are not secular. Secular does not mean that you don't talk of God at all. Secular means that you are not partial to a particular religion. But what we have done is we have thrown God completely out of our educational institutions. That the great American philosopher, Runes, he said, you are throwing God out of your universities and your colleges. But remember, the vacuum that is thus created will be immediately filled in by the devil. And, and it is true, so many of our institutions are presided over by the devil. Uh, my idea of secularism is to permit a person to move on whatever path he chooses to God. The paths are many. The goal is one. Let your brother move on a path which is different from yours. You should not interfere with him. That is secularism. But secularism doesn't mean not to talk of God at all. You've said a very beautiful thing the last time I spoke to you. You said we need more spirituality and less religion. Yes. The emphasis should be on spirituality. We do not want relig religions. Uh, religions have really created feuds, wars, strife, hatred. We don't want that type of religion. We want true spirituality. I believe that we, each one of us, is born as a human being only to realize the fact that he is an immortal being. He is an immortal spirit. What God gives once, he never takes away. He has given us the gift of life. And he will never take away that gift of life from us. But the forms will keep on changing. This world is a school. Experience is our teacher. 
we get different sets of experiences. You get your own experiences, I get my own experiences. Because you have to learn a different set of lessons from the ones that I have to learn. True. Dada, you've, you've studied many religions and when you speak, you speak from different texts across religions. In your lifetime of study of religions, do you believe that all religions talk the same language and it is the way you interpret it? What is your message? I mean, how universal is essentially, religion? Essentially, they talk the same language. But there are differences. There is no doubt, depending upon the place and the time that the particular religion was formulated, there are differences. But essentially, the teaching is the same. Essentially, at, at the heart... Every religion tells you that you must live at peace with your brother. This is secularism. Don't impose your views on others. You follow your own view. You follow the light as it has been shown to you. The philosophy that Dada Vaswani preached was that of brotherhood and simple living. It transcended faith and a lot of what he said was also inspired by Sufi and Sikh beliefs. We were sort of followers of Guru Nanak. Really? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Sadhu Aswani had the greatest reverence for, for uh, Guru Nanak. Even the Sufi influence is something that you write a lot about. Was there yeah. a very strong Sufi influence yeah. as well? They put a question to Sadhu Aswani, who are you? And he gave different answers on different occasions. But on one occasion he said, I am a Sufi. There was no idea of fundamentalism in those days. Now they say you can't be a Sufi until first you become a Muslim. Yeah. Then only you can become a Sufi. But would you say that you're closer to Sufi faith, the Guru Granth Sahib or the Gita? I mean, how would you, if you were to put, they, it's all together. They're all one, they're all they're one. one. Dada's message was always simple and profound. He loved the Bhagavad Gita and spoke to us about how to walk the path of spirituality every day. The teaching, the teaching is very simple. If you want it to be simple, the Gita says, get up, get up in the morning before you open your eyes, before you leave your bed. Think of God. Say, repeat the word Om or any other word which to you is symbolic of truth or God. Repeat it. Even if you do it once, it's enough. When you repeat the word Om, you have forgotten all the worries and fears that you had yesterday. It is as though you are beginning a new life. Every day comes to me as a gift of the new life. Mm. I attend to my duties. The simple teaching is do your duty. We are told in the Gita that even if your duty be an ignoble one and the duty of another be a nobler one, you must not renounce your duty and attend to the duty of another. Death in the performance of one's own duty is the right thing. It's such a simple, simple teaching. 
The father has his own duty. The mother has her own duties. The children have their own duties. The students have their own duties. The teachers have their own duties. If each one did, if each one were true to his or her duty, that is all that is needed to transform the world. It starts with each person. Tell me, Dada, you, you know, the last time I spoke to you, you spoke about switch on the light, the light from within. Take us through what it means to switch on the light. When you say switch on the light, what do you mean? Switching on the light comes later. First, you do your duty and gradually you understand or perhaps you come in contact with the community which has dedicated itself to a life of the spirit and you sit in silence for some time. This is very essential. A stage comes in the life of the seeker when he is asked to spend some little time. Every day and night cycle brings 1440 minutes. Out of this, just spare 15 minutes or spare 30 minutes. Find out a silence corner. The telephone must not reach you. Go and sit there in silence and try to take a dip within yourself. Even as there is this wonderful world around us, all around us are wonders. But there are greater wonders that are within us. We don't explore them. That is our difficulty. If only once you took a dip within yourself, within yourself are layers, layer upon layer. Penetrate those layers and you will find that which you will not be able to express in words. It goes beyond words. Mm -hmm. So what does one find when you dip within? Do you find peace when you talk about the spiritual quest? How important is finding peace within? Uh, you know, for a lay person, what does it really mean? You find peace within. And peace, perhaps, is the richest treasure that humanity can have. You may be the sovereign of all the world, but if you don't carry peace in the heart within, you are restless. You are not happy. On the other hand, you may have nothing. You may own nothing. But if you have peace in your heart, you are one of the happiest of people on earth. That is why that holy man said 2,000 years ago, nothing in the morn do I have, and nothing do I have at night. And yet there is none on earth wealthier or happier than I. Why? Because he had peace of mind. But today's life is so hectic for most people, Dada. You know, we have made it. No, so so what do you what is your message to those people who are chasing dreams, chasing ambitions, you know, who are constantly on the move, are jet setting all over the world, doing big deals, etc. What is your message to them? My message is a simple one. The message which I give to myself. Turn back to God. And these four words is all that I had to say. We have turned away from God. Therefore, we have turned away from the light. Therefore, we are groping in darkness. We have turned our backs to the light. And in front of us, there is the shadow, the darkness 
of our own shadows, we walk in that darkness. Therefore, are we unhappy? All we have to do is to take a U-turn. We have to face the light. And if I face the light, there will be no darkness in front of me. The darkness will be at the back. When you talk about darkness, you're obviously talking about the worry and the fear that people live with. How do you move away from that fear and the worry? What is your advice to people? It is a matter of attitude. You need to change your attitude. If your attitude is always a positive one, and if you really believe that in whatever happens to you, there is something good which God is sending to you. Your, your life becomes different. It's all a change of attitude. Our attitude is such that the least little thing makes us, fills us with fear. And when fear enters the heart, all joy goes out. We, each one of us, we are made for joy. We are children of joy. But we have become children of darkness. Therefore, what we need is a strong will. We should develop a strong will. We should pray for a strong will. We should read the lives, the biographies of people whose will was strong. Mm. It's only a strong will and wisdom that can conquer this negativity. What are your views, Dada, on ambition and success? Do you think people are chasing the wrong goals in life when you see people wanting to be wealthier, more successful, is our definition of success and ambition wrong according to you? I believe that humanity is only a station on our journey onward. We have come here to learn certain lessons. But an ambition and the like, they hold us captive. In the measure in which I can handle ambition in the right way, I rise. Then I move to another station. And then to a third station. This life is a pilgrimage. It takes us from one station to another. So switch on the light, you say. Thank you, Dada. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.